Welcome to Ocean County Focus. I'm Donna Flynn, your host. Joining me today is Ocean County Commissioner Ginny Haynes, who serves as liaison to the Ocean County Department of Parks and Recreation and Ocean County Natural Lands. Ginny, thank you so much for joining me today. And this is an exciting time of year for parks and recreation mm -hmm. as we start to move through spring and we go into the summer. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about what's happening with our parks now. Uh, well, thank you, Donna, <laughs> for having me the, again, you know, on the program today, but there's a lot. I mean, Ocean County has 27 parks. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think we have the largest park system in the entire state. There's a lot happening. We have parks in the northern part, the southern part, the eastern part, and the western part mm -hmm. of Ocean County. So we're trying to cover the whole area. And in fact, one of our parks that we're going to be building, we're in the process of finalizing the still some of the property that we're buying okay. is in Manchester, which mm -hmm. Manchester does not have a county park. It's right. probably going to be, I think there's approximately 300 acres, something like that. Some is going to be passive and one section is going to be uh, recreational for mm -hmm. all ages. It's mm -hmm. going to be, and it's going to be a beautiful park. It's going to take a couple of years to get it done, but it's going to be a, an absolutely gorgeous park. Um, for, welcome for everybody to go there and enjoy it. It's right there on 571 mm -hmm. and um, Hope Chapel Road South and also Ridgeway Boulevard. So it's right, you know, on there. If anyone knows anything about the area, they can go by there and see. Right now, it's just a wooded area. Right, and We're right. still in the process of finalizing one piece of property for that we're trying to buy, to purchase, <laughs> to finish, you mm -hmm. know, to complete the whole the landmass that we are going to be buying for mm -hmm. that. And that's got to be an exciting time yes. for you and and your and the folks in parks and stuff like that. I mean, building a large brand yes. new park is a big undertaking. But I know within the department though, there's also smaller things that have yes. that go on throughout the year to make sure that there people is. get to yes. the, to see the best of facilities. And I just wanted to talk hit on a couple of them right now. Um, Lake Shenandoah Visitor Center. Lake Shenandoah is Lake Shenandoah Park up in up in, in Lakewood. Mm -hmm. Where what are we seeing up there? Well, what you're going to be doing, Lake Shenandoah, you can get onto into Lake Shenandoah either from Route 88 or Ocean Avenue, mm -hmm. or you can get in from New Hampshire. And it's just a beautiful park. There's a lot of walking you can do. There's picnic grounds. There's also a new visitor center that is uh, being built, and it's it's pretty much finished. Mm -hmm. That will have you know someone will be there, and it'll be you know have different information for individuals to be able to be as well as some restrooms you know for everyone. But it, it's going to be something it's been closed and it used to be years ago um it was a, a, i think where we sold um fishing like bait and tackle because right? yeah. 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 you can can't go and fish mm -hmm. in lake shenandoah it's mm -hmm. a very large lake it comes from clover street if anyone knows anything about um, lakewood it's clover street which is off of ocean avenue mm -hmm. and it goes all the way that's where it starts and then it goes almost all the way to where you get to New Hampshire. You're gonna have small streams and things like that. But it's it's an absolutely beautiful park. There is just so much that you can do there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the waterfall. There's a waterfall right. that's there that, in fact, we just did some repair work that mm -hmm. needed to be done. But it's one of our 27 parks. Um, and that was being built back in the 70s when they started to build Lake Shenandoah. It's directly across from Ocean County Park right, if you right. are on Route 88. Mm -hmm. But there's just a lot of things to do there. We have a lot of um, schools that go there. They have bus trips that will go in. You have people that play soccer. You have, and I'm sure some that might even play baseball. They set it up themselves, uh, picnicking and things like that. But when you have large groups, you always have to remember, you have to make sure that you get a permit Right, um, right. From the uh, Parks Administration, mm -hmm. you, it, which you can go to the Parks web website and get all that information. But everyone is welcome to go to the park. I mm -hmm. mean, we, as I said, I'm just very proud of all the parks that we have in Ocean Absolutely. County. Absolutely. Um, so from Lake Shenandoah, we're actually going to talk, we're going to head south now. Um, okay. So <laughs> down in, in Freedom Fields, you yes. currently have two dog parks in Ocean County, yes, or two, two, two that are overseen by Parks and Recreation for the county. What's going to happen there in the near future for well, a it's third one? Built. In fact, it's almost completed. There is a dog park that's going to be done in Freedom Fields, mm -hmm. which is off of Route 539 in Little Lake Harbor Township. Um, and it's a, an absolutely beautiful park. It also has soccer fields and it's constantly uh, busy. I right. mean, anytime you go by Freedom Fields, it is, but that, that's the, it's gonna have a dog park because mm -hmm. the other dog parks we have, one is in Ocean County Park and one is in um, Miller Air Park mm -hmm. where people go. And of course, 
a lot of you know the residents would love it if we had a dog park all over the county. Right, in and, every and town, park, probably. In every <laughs> single county park, but it's sort of impossible because right. you have to make sure that you have restrooms, you have to make sure you have electricity, you have to make sure that you have water, running water, and it, it can be very, very expensive sure. if those, uh, those uh, services are not already available. Mm -hmm. Freedom Fields has been a park for a number of years, I said, and so it was, so it was very easy for us to go and decide you know, to do a, a dog park in Freedom Fields. Mm -hmm. So now, with, with when, whenever that, that is completed and open, you, you will have one in each area, really, if you're looking mm -hmm. at the central, um, you know, southern and, yes. and northern areas of the county. So it kind of covers quite a lot of places. And you guys, for, for, for your dog parks, though, you have attendance there, though. Oh, we do. Which is somewhat, un yes. which is kind of unique, really, because some of the other ones, you know, if they're if they're just local ones or whatever, they people just kind of go there. Yeah, no, we what, do. What's the diff? Why? Why? Well, number one is it is important to make sure that people are following the rules and regulations. Right. I mean. Everyone it seems like you turn around. There's rules and regulations for everything, but unfortunately, we have to have rules and regulations. Sure, and sure. there's certain things that, when you um, go to the dog park, that you have to follow the certain rules. And of course, you, you know, they have to be registered. Right. I said so. You have to make sure that you are bringing a dog that does have the shots right. that are up to date, because mm -hmm. there is also going to be other dogs there. Um, and so that's why it's very, very important that we have, you know, someone in attendance to make sure all that is being followed and that there isn't any problems. Of course, I know during COVID, we did have people that would be getting in touch with us like, well, why aren't the dog bowls out? Why right. aren't their chairs out and the tables? Well, because of COVID, sure. we couldn't have that because sure. no one could sit next to each other. Right. But now with things, more people getting vaccinated and with things getting so much better than what we were, the last year that we're going to be able to have all of those things back there again for everyone. But it's plus the attendance there in case they have any questions sure. or if there's a problem. Right. Because Absolutely. Then they are able to call security right. or call if, God forbid, somebody falls or something right. happens to someone, we can get in touch with someone. So yeah. it's important that we have someone there. Yeah, at all of the three dog park areas that we have. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to shift up a little bit further north. Yeah, um, Wells Mills County Park. We is the county looking yes. at doing upgrades to the environmental center. There? Oh, well, we're, we're totally, totally. I mean, Wells Mills has been in existence twenty five years or more, and so what we've done is the building needs to have a complete renovation. Mm -hmm. So that Wells Mills Park, there, uh, the building that is there is totally being renovated. It's going to be updated. Uh, we have to have a new elevator, and it's going to be. Uh, just a, a, a facility that besides having just someone there during the day to uh, go in and monitor, they'll also have pe different groups that will be able to come there. They can have, you know, different, we can have different um, of our uh, rec people talk about the right. different programs that we have going on there. There will be programs that are going on there. There's also last year, if you remember Donna, there was a wonderful concert right. at Wells Mill Park right. that they had. I think that was like last stock. October, mm -hmm. September, October, mm -hmm. with a band, and it was magnificent. And right. we had a very large crowd. Right. Uh, even though we had COVID, right. and everybody was seated, you know, the right. proper the distance, distance yep. away from each other. But I mean, it's another great park mm -hmm. that has all types of fields. It has walking. It has all different things that anyone could possibly. And I think the Barnegat Branch Trail, which starts in Barnegat, walks goes right. right on up through that whole area. Right. So it's we have, as I've said, we have a very large park system and almost every single one of our parks, you can do everything, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's picnicking, sitting and reading and relaxing, just playing ball, whatever the person may wish to do with their children, have a picnic, right. they can do. And we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back here on Ocean County Focus. Recently, a significant connection between Berkeley Township and Lacey Township was highlighted at the unveiling of the new trestle which now sits above Cedar Creek. It now connects the three-mile trail from Cedar Creek to Hickory Lane in Berkeley Township. When the Barnegat Branch Trail is completed, it will span over 18 miles from Barnegat to Toms River Township. Ocean County has completed seven stages of the trail thus far. For continued updates, please visit the county website or be sure to download the new free app. Welcome back to Ocean County Focus. My guest today is Commissioner 
Ginny Haynes, and we're talking about Ocean County Parks. Ginny is liaison to the Parks Department. You have, it's, it's big. It's, you know, mm -hmm. when you're talking about 27 parks, two golf courses, probably over 4,000 acres of oh, open please. space just with that. And again, each, each park is a little bit unique and, you know, and, and everything needs to be maintained and taken care of. One of the sites or one of the areas I wanted to talk to you about today is Caddis Island County Park. Um, the county has been the recipient of a $3 million grant from mm -hmm. the DEP to preserve really the shoreline. Um, what's happened there and what is the county doing? Well, fortunately, um, we are getting that, that $3 million grant and we'll be working with Stevens Institute of Technology. They will be working with the parks employees to survey that to find out what you know what is happening what they can do as you know with last week last friday or we, we toured mm -hmm. this because we started a parks administration which is off of yellow bank and then that shoreline goes all the way around to berkeley island park and when we toured that you can see the tremendous amount of erosion you're talking it had to be eight feet up you know that the erosion was right. where had, the trees have just gigantic trees have just fallen into the waters there and just from the erosion has come down which is was started probably a little bit from hurricane sandy and then of course each hurricane or heavy wind storm that we have had with rain has caused even more erosion mm -hmm. and it, it, it's just very very sad and we need to do something to that we're going to be able to begin to protect our shorelines right. because it that also we have the same thing in Berkeley Island which mm -hmm. of course that is been taken care of because of you know what we we've, we've done in the past with redoing right. Berkeley Island Park which is the John C Bartlett Park but though over on Caddis Island it's a it's another we have our nature center there mm -hmm. um, that's it's utilized by many of the pe residents of Ocean County and those that visit but just going and seeing all that erosion and one of the things that Mike Magnum had pointed out to me besides Besides the erosion from the trees, what you also had was there was always the kingfish bird that he would say at one point there had to be, because apparently they bury a, burrow a hole in the side of the dirt. Right. There, I mean, whatever how high it might be, that so they're, they're protected from predators. And at one time he said there was probably maybe 50 holes that the kingfish bird would Wow. Do. Now, he said then they were gone, but yes, last week when we were walking and I was surveying and going seeing the erosion that we have along that shoreline there were two or three kingfish burrow holes mm -hmm. that had started so I was very happy to see that and so was Mike because they're slowly coming back but you can see even that it's the importance because there are so many trees that are just on the edge that if we get another bad storm or mm -hmm. high winds that are going to come and I learned something the other day that it's called the Fitch um, and of course I had mentioned it to my fellow commissioners and of course with the Fitch is it's um, the uh, heavy rain and wind mm -hmm. that and the waters that are just rushes through and then the wind is called a Fitch mm -hmm. which I didn't know and that is really what is causing a lot of the erosion mm -hmm. and of course that's why it's so important and we're just so grateful that we're able to get that three million dollar grant from right. the Department of Environmental Protection because we all understand it's not just preserving history preserving open space but we need to preserve our shoreline sure, and Ocean sure. County has miles upon miles upon miles of shoreline mm -hmm. whether it's along the Atlantic Ocean along the Barnegat Bay or along the Matitaconk any of the waterways that we may have it's just so important that we preserve that mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't have the erosions that because it's not just the trees. I mean, you have creatures that live, sure. whether it's sure. something that's living in our waters or something that's living in our forest and, and in the surrounding areas. It's mm -hmm. just very important that we preserve that. Mm -hmm. Now this, and, and the way you are preserving it, this is a living shoreline. Yes. What is a living shoreline? Well, I would say, you know, living shoreline is going to be with the trees because trees are living. And all the and, natural plants and, and that sort of thing. And all the natural habitat yeah. that you have, with the, the flora and fauna that you have growing there. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's the other living thing is like the different types of birds that you have. Sure, You're sure. going to have those that are always around your waterways and you're going to have the ones, like I mentioned before, the kingfish bird right. that makes, burrows a hole in the side of uh, like, a cliff or mm -hmm. a mountain of sand with mm -hmm. sand. I said, and there's many, there are many. They have had 
uh, not ospreys, but they've had, there was another type of bird that was mentioned that they have there because this is, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. Sure, I mean, sure. just going there last week and just without seeing, you know, just seeing the erosion, but just looking out and, mm -hmm. and seeing with Caddis Island and just the water and just, Ocean County is a, a county of people that like boating. Sure. They like being sure. on the water, whether right. they're sitting there or they're kayaking or they're paddle boating, whatever it may be. And it's it's just that we want to make sure that they're going to be able to continue to do that right. and not prohibit right. people from right. going to this natural shoreline, this living shoreline that we have. So mm -hmm. it's really up to the to the commissioners as well as the state of New Jersey and federally, because mm -hmm. we have been very successful in other times to receive monies also from the federal government to try and preserve the different areas of, mm -hmm. of land and for whatever and might need to be done. Something unique about this project actually is your residents can follow this on a website. There, uh, because that's now at the, they, if, you, if you go to the county website, from what I understand, and you look at the planning department or parks department, you could actually start to follow that. Exactly. Which is kind of, which is kind of nice, because that kind of draws people in it, to say, hey, this is what they're doing there to it protect is, it us. It is, and it's, and, and more and more people, of course, before COVID, but of course, since COVID hit, because more and more people are left at home. So right. of course, a lot of people were going to their computers. Sure. But it, 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 it's just wonderful that you could go to the Ocean County website, go to the parks website, and then you can click on. There's all the areas that you can click on that you might want to look. I know during the COVID, with regards to Caddis Island, right. you could go there and every Friday, they would have a specific animal mm -hmm. or bird or, or you know, or a turtle, whatever it may have been. Right. And they would have a recreation person who specializes in that give the whole history of that, like a box turtle. Mm -hmm. What is the box turtle? And then there was a snake. Right. So, I mean, these are the things. And then we have a camera that's on one of the osprey nests. Right. So, of course, Which you is have, amazing. Those, those birds are majestic. Is. Just so you majestic. Can, right. And you can watch to see if there's any eggs there. Mm -hmm. If it's the right time of year, you can watch them being hatched. Right. I mean, plus there's live animals that are in Caddis Island. So there's, there's just so many things that they could, a person can go to when they go to the county website mm -hmm. to click on the parks and, and just go and look. And they can explore right the county just right. by going to their website right and how important is all of that um you know and actually we're, we just ran out of time for this segment so we're going to be right back here on ocean county focus hi i'm freeholder jenny haynes join me on this tour of some of ocean county's premier park sites The Ocean County Department of Parks and Recreation has something for everyone. Try us out. You won't be disappointed. Welcome back. Ginny, when we went to break, we were talking about the numerous projects and, and um, plans that you, know, that you and, and the Board of Commissioners are, are working with for the Ocean County Parks system and stuff. And there's a, a couple of, just a couple of other ones that I'd like to hit. On, on, you know, in this last segment of the show. And one of them is the, the restoration of the Cox House in mm -hmm. Barnega Township. Because really, parks and recreation is more than just parks, more, rec more than rec, but it's also the historical preservation in parts of Ocean County. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the Cox House, um, the, the, why is that important and why um, the restoration is taking place there? It's just, Barnega Head is a very historic town, and mm -hmm. a lot of people may not realize it, besides the Cox House, and then we have um, the Cedar Bridge Tavern, and there's a couple other areas that we have. But the Cox House is historic because it was one of the homes of Captain Billy Cox. Okay. Now, Captain Billy Cox was a long time, uh, many years ago that he was alive. And of course, he had that home and he had another home on Bay Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, but it's historic. Um, and fortunately for us, and we are going, we are re 
redoing the Cox House right. um, because it just needs to be done and we want that to be able to be used to have different programs there. We will have people, you know, coming there for whatever programs that we they want to have to right. have it done. But what we have to do with this particular place because it is historic you have to have a historic architect right. working on it you have to have people that are special to, they specialize in whether it's the roof mm -hmm. now the back part of the cox house the garage is on historic registry and we just received a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar grant from the state of new jersey to towards that so that we can start to repair that mm -hmm. and of course then we've just applied for another grant because we're going to be we had to get rid of some mold that was in the house and there's other areas that need to be um, corrected that to make it so that it's going to be an area that people can go in right. and it's safe and sound sure. for anyone to use. Sure. But it is historic. It's right on Route 9 or mm -hmm. quote Main Street in Barnegat and West Bay Avenue. And I'm hoping in a couple of years, because you never know how long things are going to take. Right, because right. when you go to redo a building or fix a building up, you never know what you're going to come across something. Sure, and especially when you start to peel back the walls or whatever you're doing right. with it. And, yep. and Mary Ann Cox, um, she was married to Luther Cox. And then of course his brother was Ambrose, Ambrose Cox. Um, but Mary Ann had owned a couple of newspapers in the right. southern part of the county. Right. Very, very much uh, in favor and was, you know, enjoyed, you know, making sure that we preserved history because mm -hmm. she was very much in favor of things like that. But of course, I had known Mary Ann. I had the pleasure and honor of knowing Mary Ann. And I'm just very happy that we're able to do this because this is also the beginning, the area where we had the beginning of the Barnegat Branch Trail. Right, right. I was going to ask you. We're working with the town and mm -hmm. we're working with some of the neighbors because what we want to be able to do is when you go to the Cox House and you go to the back of it, there's going to be an opening that people are going to be able to go through mm -hmm. and there's a parking areas that are there that they're going to be able to start the Barnegat Branch Trail, okay. which can take you all the way up to South Tom's River. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of areas along the Barnegat Branch Trail that are not fully completed right. because we need, like on Lacey Road, particular road work that needs to be done to allow people to get across the road mm -hmm. safely mm -hmm. of where it is. And of course, we just finished purchasing some of the land there. But that's the beginning of the Barnegat Branch Trail. Right. As I said earlier, there's going to be different programs that we can have there mm -hmm. that we will have recreation aids people that will be there to be able to have talks right. on the history right. of maybe the, just the Cox House, mm -hmm. on the history of just Barnegat in the southern part of Ocean County. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is so much history in Ocean County alone oh, sure. that um, you could probably just go on for days and days mm -hmm. with everything. And you have, there's a Quaker house that's just down the road on East right. Bay Avenue with, right. with the Quakers, um, you know, that mm -hmm. were there. And I knew many of the, my ex husband Dean Haynes, his mm -hmm. mother was and grandparents were Quakers. So as I said, just with the Cox House that we're doing with Cloverdale, another historic place, and then Cedar Bridge Tavern, right. the history that we have, but we're very, very proud of the work that we're doing at the Cox sure, House. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, and I'm, I, I, I would think that probably the public is very excited for whenever that will be oh, done yes. to be able to tap into that sort of history and to be able to enjoy it, really. Yeah. Um, you know, the the Cox House, in, in listening to you talk about, you know, the work that needs to be done there with the, with the historical architects and stuff, the work sounds like it kind of parallels the work that you had done at Cedar Bridge Tavern. Exactly. Uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about Cedar Bridge Tavern. I know that that's completed and it's open to the public. How are things going there? Well, that's being done uh, and that is done. I mean, and it, it's, of course, it was started when Freeholder, you know, well, then Freeholder, we were then Freeholders. John Bartlett was in charge of parks and recreation and natural lands. And um, it is the, it's known to be the last skirmish during the Revolutionary War. It's mm -hmm. on Old Halfway Road, which is off of Route 72 mm -hmm. um, in Barnegat. And it's a historic, we do have people there. We invite people to go and visit. Of course, you need to go to the website to make sure the hours that the Cedar Bridge Tavern would be open. But what they try to do is, when it was totally redone historically, is to bring it back to what it looked like during the times right. of the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War times of what it was there. And it's, it's if, you, if people have not had an opportunity to go there, I mean, they went through and they have an area where there's just the wallpaper that might have been there. And mm -hmm. then there's an area where upstairs where people could sleep. Right, And it right. just showed that. And downstairs, there was like 
a bar mm -hmm. and where people could, you know, there are tables and another room for people to eat. It wasn't a bar as we know it as today. Sure. It was just a very small section where people go up and, or the maid, whatever they did it back then, mm -hmm. could go and bring drinks over to the people if they were, you know, right. eating or just right. there to have a drink, whatever it would be. But it's just, and we want school children to be able to go there so sure. that we will have people there to talk about the history mm -hmm. of the Cedar Bridge Tavern, the history of the skirmishes that went on within the area of the Cedar Bridge Tavern. And now this Cedar Bridge Tavern, that particular that particular project, you know, for, for Parks and Recreation, um, that received a pretty significant yes, award did. not all that long ago. Tell yeah, me a little was, bit about that. It was that. just a couple of months ago we received an award from the New Jersey Historic Preservation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just very proud of it. It was in their, their 29th year of giving out awards and I think there were 10 within the state of New Jersey and of course we're very you know honored that the sure. Cedar Bridge Tavern was selected mm -hmm. to receive the award mm -hmm. um, so of course we're very proud of that I mean because it's not easy right. to go and receive a, an award from the historic preservation mm -hmm. um, there's criteria that they look at and of course fortunately for us uh, and of course the people that work for our parks department they work hand in hand with the people that are redoing our historic sure, places sure, yeah. like as i mentioned earlier you have to have a historic architect mm -hmm. you have to have a historian a person there whether whatever the work's going to be done they have to be as i said right. specialized in that particular area because we don't want to just put something there right. that wasn't part of the period right. that's why it's so important right. when we do that and we're very lucky that the new jersey historic preservation um, they saw this, that mm -hmm. we did, well, all the things that we did within uh, Cedar Bridge Tavern, that that was why we received the award. We're just proud of all the work that has been done there. Right. And actually, we have like 30 seconds left oh, in this okay. segment. So what I'd like you to do is tell people, how do they find out? I mean, Parks and Recreation has tons of programs, Carousel of Music, all these summer things coming up and stuff. How do, how do people find out well, about it? Well, if you just it? go, you can do a couple of ways. If you can just go to www.oceancounty.com government and then there, you can go and you can see the different departments there where you can go ocean county parks and recreation to you know www to ocean county parks and recreation mm -hmm. uh, website and you can click on and it's not just our parks there are so many areas of other information sure. that we have uh, sure. for all the residents it could mm -hmm. be senior services mm -hmm. it could be anything that they might want to have information our meetings uh, getting in touch with one of us as commissioners right. to talk about certain things yeah, so it's, it's a very informational uh, site that we have for all the people of Ocean County and, of course, our visitors. Mm -hmm. And so, and I guess that you... Yes, and I bought yes. one of these. <laughs> these are the programs that we put out. Right. And this happens to be the summer, spring, summer, uh, spring program for 2021. Right. And it lists all the different things that we have. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, there's volumes. There there's is. Tons it is. Of it's stuff it's, in it's there. all the different things. We have lectures and then there's preschool programs and, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, hikes and just all the different things that we have, nature, history, and bird walking yeah. that we have. So, you know, we have these in all of the areas. Uh, we have them in the library. We, mm -hmm. we have them as, again, you can go to our website and you can find out all right. this information of all the things that we provide for the people of Ocean County and our visitors. Very nice. Commissioner Haynes, thank you so much for joining us today. And I want to thank, thank you, you for joining us also. Get out in those parks and enjoy them. We'll talk to you soon. Summer brings the excitement of swimming and trips to the beach, but fun can quickly turn into tragedy. Summer safety often begins in your own backyard, where many drownings occur when children get access to the swimming pool during a short lapse in adult supervision. Ocean swimmers also need to know that waters that look calm may hide rip currents that can overpower the strongest swimmer. No matter where you choose to swim, some simple safety precautions can go a long way to preventing a tragedy.